Brothers, sisters, friends, may I once again welcome each one of you here this morning. A warm word of welcome to our beloved and respected President Mandela. We now move to the next item on our program and I request that Sheikh Fadlullah Ha'iri, who will deliver the Arabic-English address called the Khutbah in Islamic terminology. Sheikh Fadlullah Ha'iri was born in a well-known city in the Middle East. We're being addressed at the moment by Dr. Karbala. Iqbal Jazbai, who is our Educated master of ceremonies. Europe, As you see in the picture the USA, there, the president, as a mark of respect today, to the Muslim community, has removed his shoes resident in accordance with in the White traditions River. and tenets of the his Muslim faith. His presence in South Africa is certainly the, uh, a The khutbah, or a special Eid address in Arabic and English, will be led here. by the, one of the guest speakers, Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh Fadlala Hayeri, who is an academic, well-known thinker, and author of 12 books. a leading scholar of Islam, and has many publications to his credit. Before Sheikh Fadlullah Ha'iri is about to begin, our two young budding future leaders, Ms. Rabia Somas and Adib, currently are giving the president The president, the just out of your picture at the moment, is being presented with a special hat, there you see it, by two young members of the, the congregation, Ms. Rabia Summers, who's six Mike, years old, and Mr. Adib all of seven Sheikh years Fadl old, Allah presenting him Ha'iri with a special begin hat there, as you see, with the Arabic marking English this occasion. Address. President this Mandela, the uh, guest of honor at this uh, Eid celebration coming to you live on the South African Broadcasting Corporation's SABC One channel from Johannesburg, South Africa. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم فإن تولوا فكل حسبي الله لا I thank Allah Azza wa Jal for his infinite mercies upon us. The mercies that are visible and the mercies which are invisible. The ultimate mercy of having created us in order to discover the reality behind all known and unknown realities. Allah Azza wa Jal and his eternal light. I thank Allah for enabling us to gather today to celebrate and rejoice for what is called Eid. Eid in Arabic is from the word that leads to the meaning of returning. وَلَا يَكُونُ عِيدًا إِلَّا إِذَا عَادَ حِينًا بَعْدَ حِينًا وَالْعَوْدُ هُوَ مِنَ السُّرُورِ وَالْفَرَحِ 
so that we return back and back to rejoice and for us to celebrate and glorify Allah and give gratitude that we have been created as human beings so that we discover the world of the seen allowing the world of the unseen to impinge upon us and lead us into the next phase of life. We have come from the unknown and we are guided by the one and only all permeating one reality, Allah Azza wa Jal, into another phase after we leave the body. Indeed, we are all Allah's guests in this short-lived existence and journey on this world. We have come from the darkness of the womb into these uncertainties of this world in order for us to discover what is it all about, what is the purpose of it, what is the meaning of it, how can we conduct ourselves that is conducive for inner peace and inner tranquility so that from it will emanate outer peace and outer tranquility until we leave that which does not belong to us, which is the body, and soar back again into the eternal creator beyond time, beyond space. Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy is such that he has already programmed us in our primal fitrah, wanting that absolute freedom. Relative freedom is not sufficient for human beings. We are all caught in this time and space in order for us to yearn for the phase in which there is none other than the eternal garden. Allah Azza wa Jal describes the garden as a condition of the heart. Allah des describes the garden as something that we taste in this world, but we will regain next world in an absolute sense because there is no more time and space. The month of Ramadan is a most difficult and the most easy and the most glorious month for the Muslims. Indeed, the deen of Islam is simply echoing all of that which went before it. The deen of Islam did not begin with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu It ended, it was completed. All the prophets, all the messengers were prophets of Islam. They had to submit to the fact that we are here in order to leave. They had to submit to the fact that we are ignorant and we are seeking knowledge. They had to submit to the fact that we are uncertain and we are seeking certainty. They had to submit to the fact that we are insecure, seeking security on a personal level as well as that of a society. We are all in submission to these realities. The only difference is that some of us, by that submission and that ibadah, we get more and more tuned to the presence of eternal light. And therefore, we begin transformation rather than information. We all begin wanting to be informed, but we all want to end up being transformed in the knowledge that Allah is in charge, that the glorious Lord and the Creator, ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. He has never neglected anything in existence because Allah Azza wa Jal permeates everything in existence, known and unknown. Allah gives us constant opportunities for us to rediscover and Allah tells us in the Quran that He has created us all from oneself and therefore equality in the eye of God. We are all the same in the eye of Allah Azza wa Jal except according to our degree of abandonment, according to our degree of detachment, of less ego, less of our animal self, more and more of the higher self, which according to Allah Azza wa Jal is above the angels. We can be worse than the animals and we can be above angels. And this is where the freedom we have. We have equality in the eye of Allah. We are all his children. We are all his creation. And we have the freedom of choosing whether to serve without expectation or only serving for grandeurs and other as aspects which are only going to last as long as the circumstances last. We are all human beings seeking and searching for that which is permanent. We are all looking for the unity of human beings. Today and yesterday simply exemplified the unity of Muslims. Nearly one and a half billion people have been praying like we have been here in the open fields asking for Allah's rahmah, asking for Allah's manifestation of mercy in the hearts so that it overflows into societies, into communities, so that there will be peace and tranquility, so that people can know how to worship.